Hello and welcome to uh, Visual Basic uh, using the .NET network framework, .NET framework uh, 2010 specifically dealing with do, do loops. And what I did in order to correspond this a little bit more to the material that you're uh, looking for and used to is I'm actually looking at the book itself and kind of following along and talking about different things. The idea behind a do loop is that you are simply going to execute code over and over again uh, and it's going to have some sort of exit condition uh, condition involving a number so it says uh, let's see the do loop structure takes the form of this statement is executed at least once condition is a boolean expression used to determine the loop is repeated if condition is true statement is executed then and condition reevaluated the loop is repeated until condition evaluates it false for example in this particular statement below for whatever reason or we're going to do loop while the number is less than 10. So we're going to de declare number as an integer, and it's equal to 0 to start with. Then we're going to say number equals number plus 2. And what that's going to do is, and kind of going along here, the first iteration of the loop, number, is going to end up as 2. And then after that, it's going to be 4. And after that, it's going to be five. Excuse me, six. And you'll notice what's going on here as it as it loops through. As long as the number is less than ten, it continues the loop. As soon as the number is ten, it'll actually break out of this loop. So what happens is, is the first time it goes through the loop, number is two. The next time it goes, four, six, eight, and then ten. And if we were going to actually put this together, let me go ahead and load this bad boy up. Can you? kind of see an example here. Should probably load this beforehand. Uh, let me go ahead and pause this. All right, so what I've done in order to illustrate kind of how this works is I've created a very simple form. And all this does is you can put in a number that um, you'll see right here you have your count by, meaning how much it actually increments number by, and until number, meaning how much it actually loops until. And then I actually have an output, which is right here, and you can't see it right now, but there's an output uh, label right around here that actually puts the values in. So what will basically happen is I'll take any information, and the number, int number, is my variable. Text until is what I actually loop it until. Then I take the number, I add it to whatever the count by text is. So it always adds to itself. This is also another, there's a, a few parts to this particular chapter, one of which is loops. The other one is using um, accumulators. That's right here. And what I've done here is where it says int number equals int number plus the val of txt by count by text. That's how much it's actually going to count by. So it adds to it itself. So if I counted by 3 and I started at 0, which that int number starts at, it'll be 3, 6, 9, and then whatever my exit condition is. So if my exit condition is 20, it'll count up to 21 and then stop. So this gives me control over what the actual code is doing in between here. And you can have it do anything. Uh, another section they talk about is um, there's input boxes. And there's also message boxes. So let's say, for instance, I do message box dot show hello, and I'm going to concatenate that with the number of int number. Now, not not overly exciting by any means, but let's go ahead and run this. So if I'm going to count by 2, and I want to go until I'm 18, what it's going to do, or sorry, until the number is 18, it's going to initialize int number 0, it's going to add 2 to int number, and every time it goes through, it's going to print out a 2 here, it's going to print out a 2 here, and it's going to continue to print that out until such time as it's 18 or greater. So here we go. So I'm going to run my loop. Notice it does 2, it stops, there's hello 2. Then it does for each iteration, it's doing everything between here and here. Now, I just put in elements in here. It could be a way to 
taken data. Let's say you were um, wanting the user to input 10 numbers. I could do an input box in here, and I'll put an input box in here so we can explain that, that it takes in 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, blah, 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 to stop, and we'll do that here in a minute. So there's 6, because in each one of the instances, it's, remember, it's counting by 2 until the number is 18 or greater. So 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and then done. And it says... Uh, as long as the it's less than text until. So the very last element, when it's at 16, it then added to it, it had the last hello box, and then it was done. Now, what I could do, the other thing that we're kind of working on in this particular, particular chapter is what's called an input box. Input box, counters, and accumulators. Here's our example of our accumulator. Now let's look at our input box example. So, I do... Um, Let's do message box dot show input box. And the way an input box works is we've got two elements. It's the title of the input box. Let's see, we're going to call this box sample. And then we're going to put a comma and we're going to put in please input a value, a message. So, basically what's going to happen is, I'm going to take, and this is kind of an uh, interesting way to do it, I'm going to take in this input box, and I put it in the message box show. But we're going to do something. We're going to call this dim str message sample as string. So what's going to happen now, right here, is I'm going to change it to str message sample equals input box da 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 now the thing you have to remember about input boxes is you have to assign it somewhere it's a call to a function it's going to do something and it's going to have to assign it somewhere so if i was going to come along in here i could do message box dot show uh, so let's see message sample meaning that's going to be the uh, oh I'm just going to put in str message sample so what's going to happen here when I run this is it's going to be my usual output then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in a, a, a value box sample please input a message I'm going to input the sample message and then I'm going to actually output it in a message box and the idea is is as many times as I want to loop this through is as many times as it's going to ask the user to actually look at this information and see what's going on as you go through it so for instance I'm going to go ahead and run it and then I'm going to count by two again my unit number is going to be 18 and I'm kind of excuse me, my until number is going to be 18, and I'm going to run my loop. So, hello 2, there's my 2, I'm going to push OK, so now what I've done is I've gotten to that point, the next thing is, please input a message, and that's my line right here, sample input box. So I'm going to put in that, and then I come up in my in message box that comes right after, and there's my sample input box. And then I go right through it. Now, if I was getting input, and there's hello 4, so I've incremented again. So if I'm getting input from a user, and I want it to go so many times, this is how you get it to go so many times. You, you set the restraints of what they're trying to do, and then you ask them over and over again using an input box. So there's our hello 4, a box sample, uh, 4 sample, OK. There's our 4 sample, hello 6. And there's our box sample again. So this is going to be hello 6. I input it. Hello 6. Hello 8. And then I'm just going to put, since people are getting the idea here, hello 10. I'm going to put in, here's 10. Uh, uh, takes in the values. Stores it in the variable. Then it outputs it in the variable. And then we do it again. So there's 14. Output it in the variable. There it is. 16, and we kind of continue until such time as we're done with this, and then the last one would be 18, and then we're done. Now, that actually runs us through some of the main concepts 
Uh, these are using our repetition control structures. In our particular case, this particular control structure is a do-while loop. Um, the, when it talks about debugging infinite loops, you have to remember using that breakpoint is very, very particular when you can't get through the function in any way, shape, or form. Uh, using inputs, counters, and accumulators. Here's our input box. Once again, here's how I use the input box. Right? So I take in a message. Here's a, a title of the input box. Please inputting a message. And then where the STR message sample goes out. And then it says, okay, uh, we're going to worry about comparing strings in another time. Uh, all right, so we've done most of the items involved, including the message box. Now, there is another type of loop. Let me go ahead and pull up the uh, text itself here. So there's our do loop. And we talk about through our, our main do loop structures. And there's our talking about our input boxes, as we've already discussed. And this was specifically on page 132. It talks about how to store it. And I gave you an example. And there's our example of our accumulator variables. And our accumulator variables, it goes through on page 133. And there's some review projects for you to look at. And you'll notice here's our do while temp score equals nothing and vault temp score is flagged. So now we're using a sentinel value to kind of make sure that, hey, this is user inputting values. As soon as they don't input anything in a temp score, it stops. As long as they input stuff in a temp score, it's going to continue. And my flag, which is, okay, const flag is integer is equal to negative one, means that if temp score ever equals negative one, they'll also break out of it. So if it's negative one or zero, it's going to continue to loop as long as it's not it's nothing or it's not negative one. But as soon as it's either one of those values, it's going to stop. The for next loop, unlike the do while loop, loops through for a given number of times. So the way this particular works is for number as integer equals one to ten, and before it would actually stop looping at a certain value, this will loop until a certain value is met. So let me go ahead and pull that up and give you a really idea. So I could do for int number equals 1 to 10, right? And then down here, I do next int number. I'm going to take this on error resume out. And I'm also going to take out this accumulator because it's not going to help us here. So the way this works, and I'm going to, since we've already seen the example of this input box and this message box, I'm going to take those two out. And the way this works is I am going to loop through this code 10 times. Everything between here and here, it's going to run 10 times. So when we did our do while loop, as long as a certain condition is true, it continues to loop through. A for next loop will do those certain values. If you want the user to input 10, this is the way to do it. If you want the user to input until they input a negative 1 or a 0, the uh, do until or the do while is the way to go. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm actually not going to enter any values because of the fact I'm not actually taking my text by or my count until. So these actually mean nothing. So I'm going to run this one, two, because it's going through each one of these one time. So it's running all of this once. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm done. Now, a way to modify this is I could actually write step two, and it'll count by twos behind it. So if I come in here, I stop, and I do step two. And then I run it three, five, seven, nine, done. So it actually does it. All right, that concludes m most of the major items in Chapter 5. I hope my little program that I've created to kind of run these help you out. If you have further questions beyond that, please let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you for the uh, focus problem in Chapter 5. Thank you very much for your time.